I'm Dr. Greg Ellis. The hard thing about all this diet and weight control stuff is to get sound information. There's so much misinformation out there, so many people dealing with their own agendas. You see this at all levels of society, with the medical establishment and with the university professors and with lay people. People are interested in this topic, they're just reading books, and there's authors out there who are writing articles and books, and if you haven't done your homework, it's going to be a very big challenge to get out there. Now, for whatever reason, as a youngster, I was interested in these topics, and I started spending a lot of time, and I would hear all these things, and I adopted the habit of trying to seek the truth. Major, major trouble, major problem, finding the truth. One of the earliest things that I remember was that people would say to me, when you, when you get older, you're going to quit lifting weights and all your muscles are going to turn to fat. So that was one of the first kind of things I looked at. And muscle tissue is muscle tissue. It can't turn to fat tissue. So I began to see these, these false reports and in the, all these topics that interested me about diet, and I, just, I kept pursuing it and kept pursuing it and kept pursuing it. Not sure it was the best idea, as shall we say, a career move, but it's what I chose to do. And here I am still doing it today. And many topics were of interest to me, like the whole cholesterol theory of heart disease, which we now know is wrong, and we know it's glycation, or circulating glucose that, that causes all the problems. I noticed on some of my videos, people made comments talking about, for example, the health of the Japanese, and others would talk about the health of vegetarians. All this is false. The Japanese have the worst certification of death records in the world, and Japanese don't want to die of heart disease, but they'll accept dying of brain disease because they want to think that intelligence is really important, so heart disease is not acceptable. So when they do the death certificates, they'll often write brain stroke instead of heart attack, so they can keep them happy. And then their food keeping records are very difficult and challenging. And then you look at the vegetarians and the studies that have been done on them, and you find out that they're not that healthy either. Uh, they have heart attacks equal to people who are eating meat. So you just get this false information and then the reader picks the stuff up and presents it and uses it as an argument in explaining the effects of diet on health and disease. And this is the problem we run into then within the medical profession, you've got a, a very, very deceptive technique that's used in all studies today. It's called relative risk analysis. And the whole goal of relative risk analysis is to not allow the data be to be transparent. Make it confusing as you can. Now, if you go to my homepage on the site, at the bottom I've got a very good set of videos explaining all about relative risk and how they use it to deceive, to keep us all confused. And for most of these things, relative to diet, there is no relationship between health and, and diet and cholesterol. It's just pretty much all made up. And the only way they can get something to stand out is use a statistical analysis called relative risk analysis, and that's what they all do. Otherwise, they'd have nothing going on. So I learned about that in about 1980. Didn't know about that before then. And that makes it impossible for you to analyze any research or reading and get something accurate out of it, because that's the whole purpose to deceive, to confuse. Now, of course, maybe some of these people aren't wanting to do that, but they want to get their study published, and they want to have something come out of it. So why, why not use that? And they do. They do. It's become the standard in medical practice to get data to look like what it is not. And, of course, this is 
technique is used in all medical decisions now, uh, looking at uh, your so-called risk of getting cancer, or your risk of getting this, or your risk of getting that, and the word is everywhere. And everybody writes the words in all the newspaper articles, and every article, your risk of. Risk is nothing, has nothing to do with rates of. So it's the rates that matter. So it's a real challenge to get sound information and then if you're just not going to invest your whole life in this like I did, if you're just reading this book here or that book there, you're going to be getting a tremendous amount of misinformation. So for example, the Eskimo population rarely lived above 50. That's because we're averaging a 90-year-old with a 1-year-old. So that's another problem. Well, they die early, everybody said they die early. Well, you can't take the average age of death and combine it, because yeah, they do die early. The ones who make it past 50 live longer, they live well. So this becomes a problem in all these different studies. And we know from the work that's been done in calorie restriction, that calorie restriction dramatically expands lifespan in several species. And of course it turns out that that increase in lifespan and longevity is a result of reducing the exposure to glucose. And that's what does it. That's the whole, the whole deal. So you can increase lifespan just by reducing your exposure to glucose and you don't have to do calorie restriction. That's just calorie restriction. It's just a way of getting your glucose exposure down. So we know this. So when you talk about this, we know that, say, the Japanese are eating, uh, eating a diet that's high in carbohydrates. They're going to be exposed to a lot of glucose. And the age of the Japanese people will not be that great. So these are the things we have to think about when we talk about these issues. We have to think about how we're being diluted every day by all this misinformation. and Everybody's trying to make a point. They're trying to make their case. And that's just going to get you in trouble. And then you're going to misinterpret the stuff that you need to understand and know and not get the best results for yourself through your own diet or exercise program. So be careful about that. Go check out that homepage. I want you to really understand this concept of relative risk and how it's used to deceive. It's a, a real problem. Okay, I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.